Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to High and Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from PersusGrowRoom.com. This episode is the Grow Guides. Grow Guides come out every Friday, and specifically this week, we talk about bugs on cannabis plants, you know, what they look like, what the symptoms of the bugs on the plant look like, uh, how to get rid of them without pesticides, and then how to get rid of them with pesticides. There's a lot covered in this episode, so it would be good to have a pen and paper handy, like old school style, like back in the 80s kind of thing. That'd be sweet, or you can take notes on your phone. But of course, you can always head over to PersusGrowRoom.com. We have loads of guides and articles on bugs and how to fight them and how to prevent them over on the website, which you can read about even being a member of the site. So if you don't want to sign up to the forum, that's cool. There's still loads of guides there to help you learn how to grow and how to keep your plants happy and how to kill bugs if that's what you need. But like I said, there's lots of information in this episode. So if you need any help at all, head over to PersusGrowRoom.com sign up to the forum and just ask for help them and we're always happy to help it's a real friendly place so get over to purses if you haven't already and become a member that would be sweet but for now we'll leave you with the grow guides so i hope you enjoy the episodes i hope this episode teaches you some stuff about how to kill bugs and how to prevent the bugs in the first place because that's the most important thing just keeping away from the plants altogether so here it is we hope you enjoy it and i'll speak to you at the end of the episode see you in a bit So, it is not just humans that love cannabis. Bugs also love cannabis too. (laughs) And sometimes they will want to eat your plant, even though you're putting in all the hard work to grow it. And that's not fair. That's not how things should work. So, if you see bugs on your plant, you need to kill them. How do you do it? (laughs) Right, so we don't suffer with bugs very much, do we, on on the panel? Suffer is a strong word. (laughs) <laughs> but yes, no, none of us suffer with bugs. No, I always have bugs. I have like almost never grown bug free. There's always bugs in my tent. Really? Yep. Well, for a while, I uh, kept on getting thrips. They're a common one, aren't they? We mentioned that on last week's show. Yeah, they're yeah, they're pretty. I had those on my this. outdoor last year. They can yeah. be really devastating too, if not controlled. Right, and yep. Thrips as well. It's like I didn't even know what the fuck a thrip was until I started growing weed. <laughs> yeah, so it's like well, I've never seen this insect anywhere out in the wild or anything. I always say, growing weed, you'll you'll learn how to be a like a basic chemistry. You'll learn biology. You'll learn some ecology. You know, because mm-hmm. it's all encompassing. And yeah, bugs. I didn't know anything about bugs really either before I started growing. I've mm-hmm. always been interested in you know that aspect of, of science and shit, but like. You don't look into stuff really unless you need to. So, um, yeah, bugs bugs can be bad, but they can be not that bad, and they can be good too, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. It, it it mainly becomes a problem when you're growing indoors as well, because monkey mentioned this last week, I think, where if you're growing outdoors, there's going to be predators that will eat the bugs attacking your plants, and you know nature finds a way to keep everything balanced. But indoors, they don't have that kind of, that same environment. So no predators are there just waiting for aphids to get in. You know, there's no ladybirds or ladybugs just sitting on the plants waiting for the aphids to get in. So so you're going to see bugs more often outdoors than indoors, right? It's fine balance, isn't it? In my experience, yeah. Yeah, Well, yeah, the bugs live outdoors. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you have a fucking infestation of spiders or something in your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) You just be right. (laughs) Nature does have a tendency of balancing. As as long as the balance is maintained, you know, you're not spraying pesticides all over your yard. Mm -hmm. You have flowers and and plants and things for your beneficial insects like green lacewings and ladybugs and all those other bugs. Because they don't exclusively eat aphids. They're not just like, where the fuck are the aphids, you know? Mm -hmm. And they just, because they have to eat other shit too. They're kind of generalists, a lot of them these predators so yeah as long as you have uh, that balance maintained through proper 
um, you know, you're not spraying chemical fertilizers or pesticides, like I said, or insecticides and all that kind of shit, then it's, yeah, it pretty much self-regulates itself mm -hmm. inside though. Like, like you, exactly like you said, there, there, you don't have those, those, uh, buffers ex really, if you want to call them that in terms of the beneficials that naturally exist, birds are another one, you know, birds eat bugs mm -hmm. and shit. Mm -hmm. Um, indoors, unless you introduce beneficials, you're not going to get them. And so if you do get a, you know, an infestation of aphids or thrips, it's basically like the garden of Eden in there. It's a free for all food fucking thing for them because yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there's there's a, a shitload of bugs that will attack the plant as well, but some are going to be more likely than others. Like we mentioned earlier, we said thrips and does anybody want to describe what a thrip looks like or how would you, would you tell that thrips were attacking your plant? Like you can see them with the naked eye. They're not microscopic. They look They're really you, small though. They are really small. If you About look a half at them, a millimeter or, or so, yeah. They look like little teeny grasshoppers, kind mm -hmm. of, really, is what they look like. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're looking through a scope, you're probably. You've got not that long see back and it. Yeah. 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 But the, um, the most characteristic thing you'll see with thrips is the damage. And then, like we've sent on the past episode, I think it looks yeah. like somebody spit all over your leaves and then the spit dries so it's like kind of shiny and mm -hmm. glistening but that's basically just from the thrips if you think of the little claws and teeth they're and they they rasp out the, the green out of the leaf they basically scratch it and they suck out all the juice and then they leave that that shell which is, it looks silver to us but really it's just translucent because it's the plant's like structure basically without anything inside of it anymore mm -hmm. yeah that's a thrip Horrible fuckers. Yeah, they can be devastating, man. Really bad. Um, and it's the same with uh, a lot of bugs on the plants as well. You, you'll see the signs of them, and it's easier to identify the signs of some bugs rather than the bug themselves because they, they can be hard to see. And even if they are big enough, there might not be enough on there for you to just see one. It's hiding underneath one of the many leaves. Yeah. So it's good to be able to notice what the what effects they're having on the plant by looking at the leaves. And the next one will be spider mites. And spider mites is a, is a well-known bug that attacks cannabis plants. <clears throat> but that they are tiny. Monkey, you want to talk about spider mites? Yeah, spider mites are exactly what you, you say. They, they, they look like tiny, tiny spiders. They're so small that you almost need a magnifying glass to be able to identify these things. Uh, they generally live on the back of the cannabis leaf. Uh, you will find them sometime on the front as they're moving around. But they like to live on the back. They attack the plant by, again, uh, biting into the plant and sucking the juice out from the bottom. Uh, the, when your infestation is early on, what you'll basically see is little small white dots on, on, the, on some of the fan leaves and stuff. And, you know, if it gets real bad, they'll actually start, you'll start seeing what looks like web on, that forms on the bottom of the leaves. And then, you know, if, if you start seeing it on the top of the leaves, you've got really bad spider mite mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I think TG calls these guys the board because, you know, they, they work together and, and the collective takes over really, really fast. Resistance is God futile, damn trick basically, is. you know. <laughs> but there's, there's other types of mites too. Broad mites are another really mm -hmm. devastating one. But yeah, spider mites are kind of the most common mites that people think about when they think about mites. I have never mites had them. and shit as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rasset mites are another one. There's, there's soil-dwelling mites too, so... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mites are shit, man. So, spider mites, thrips. What's next? Uh, fungus gnats, man. Them fungus gnats. Mm -hmm. Everybody, fungus yeah. everybody's favorite, right? Fungus gnats. Yeah, what are you saying, TJ? Fungus gnats. I, I always have fungus gnats. I like it's. They and I exist perpetually now. <laughs> I, um, I don't mind them. You know, they they're easy as far as pests go. I, I think of pests and cannabis is like there's the big five you know we've talked about thrips spider mites um fungus gnats now there's aphids and mm -hmm. uh what was the other one maybe there's only four um fungus gnats thrips yeah. spider mites uh aphids and that's the big four yeah, yeah, yeah big, like big four i guess um there's other things too but yeah but as far as those four go fungus gnats to me are the most benign they do the least damage they're annoying but you know they're not they only do damage when they're in their larval stage in the soil 
when they're flying around, all they're doing is mating and getting in your face and flying in your mouth, which is again really lying annoying. eggs, man. Lying yeah. eggs. Yeah, yeah, they go sit on the soil and they shit stick their ass in the soil and lay their egg and then it hatches and then the larvae swims around in the soil and eats mostly detrital material, but it can they can start nibbling on root tips, which is where you get damage to your plants. They don't do any but damage. It's their shit top. as well. The the shit from the fungus gnats kind of block the soil, make it thicker so it doesn't have as good yeah. drainage if as you, it should have. If you have enough, like I would say that only happens in a like a really, really bad infestation. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's even more so just due to the sheer number of the larvae in the soil too. Mm. So, yeah. Um, but if you're at that point, then you the need, you, well, you should take immediate steps. They, uh, they, you can get rid of them. You can like with using a soil drench, using a beneficial insects or predators like nematodes and uh, BTI and some mites will uh, attack them as well, but we'll get into like prevention and treatment after here after we mm-hmm. talk about the actual pests. But yeah, fungus gnats, definitely the least of the concern of the four, but still, it's not something you really want to let get out of control because, again, their larvae can kind of fuck. And it's, it's harder to diagnose, too, because, like I say, they don't do any damage to the leaves. So you're like, oh, maybe I have nutrient lockout or something, but really it's like the fucking fungus gnats are eating the shit out of your roots. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And then we anyway. have aphids, right? The aphids is the next one. Fuck aphids. Fuck aphids. <laughs> I've never, never had any problems with aphids in my grow room. I've got oh. neither spider mites or, uh, or fungus gnats either. Aphids, man? Mm-mm. No, no. Uh-uh. I mean, they're uh, bigger. You can see them. Oh, they're, they're big. Gr- also known as green fly, black fly. You know, there's all sorts of uh, different names used for them. Black, they can be green and red aphids. They'll, they'll all come grower different bane. Kinds, yeah. Then you have yeah. spotted ones and everything else. Yeah, very different. And they're lots bigger. Of, lots so, of varieties. Yeah, and they're bigger, so they take bigger chunks out of the plant. It won't take them very long. You know, a group of those, and what, what they population suck. after they, you'll be covered I mean, in aphids, man. They literally suck. <clears throat> they just stick their proboscis in the leaf and just, and yeah, mm-hmm. vigor gone, everything gone, and they reproduce so fast, and they're so hard to get rid of because predators really don't work. Um, right and spraying you don't really want to do in certain times of the, the crop and you never get them all anyway so fuck <laughs> you make yeah. it sound hopeless yeah i don't like them <laughs> i really don't like them it's never really hopeless though you can get most of these fuckers off your plant and if you can't get them off completely you can keep uh, you can at least keep the numbers down so they don't have too much of a too much yeah. of an impact on the plant so that's yeah. that's something that you can do it's never really over it's just That's what they do with us to deal with fungus gnats, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, secondary problem I have, I've seen with aphids, and I've not had aphids in my cannabis, but on other other things though, is once you get a good crop of aphids, they start dropping what's called honeydew. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this is a sticky liquid. The ants love it. Yeah. But if something doesn't consume that honeydew, it starts going moldy very fast and it'll start yeah. turning your leaves black. Yeah. So definitely don't oh. want that. And protect aphids because they, they want the farm honeydew, them don't they, they yeah. farm they them I've they taken protect them and, of it. and harvest the honeydew and yep yeah. they fatten it's them really all cool. up but not on my fucking weed plants you little dicks you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> yep. and this is it you don't want uh, you don't want these fuckers getting into your grow tent in the first place or, you, or, or your grow room you know and you, the best cure for bugs on your plant is prevention and you have to do everything you can to try and keep these fuckers off the plant in the first place now to start with to prevent them having a good healthy cannabis plant is a good way to go a good healthy cannabis plant is going to have an immune system to some extent and it's going to be able to fight off some bugs without any help you know there's something come along and it'll have little hairs on the leaves which the bugs find uncomfortable and they'll fuck off without even laying any eggs or trying to eat anything so a good healthy plant is always a good start especially if you're growing outdoors you know a healthy plant is less likely to be attacked by insects but what else can we do what else is prevention are we washing your hands before you go into the grow room all this kind of shit well i don't do that kind of thing but you see some people go excessive and they're like you know you, you take a shower common. before you visit the grow room after you've walked the dog <laughs> and things like, it's like nah come on see that bro now i i will <laughs> shower if, if i'm mowing the lawn and stuff like that where i'm mm-hmm. really you know 
disturbing a lot of things and lots of things can be on me. I will shower before I go to my brew room mm-hmm. after that. Cause I don't want to, I mean, what if yeah. I brought an aphid in there, just one, that would be so easy for that entire tent to just go poof. You know? And if, if you go into your grow room directly after mowing your grass, like you probably deserve to get fungus nuts, you fuck. Like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta have that challenge, oh. man. You know, come on. No, no challenge. Just don't change your clothes well. at least, you know. Yeah, sometimes really. you have no choice. I know. Well, you know, because like you oh, should. sometimes you should. Your, your garden equipment is in the same area as your grown equipment well, if you have to grow in a garage if you're unfortunate that. enough to have to if sure. if that is your situation that does suck but honestly cleanliness and prevention is the easiest way to prevent any of this and uh, yet i have never had an issue fucking touch wood why did i say but i've never had a problem <laughs> yeah yeah most, no, and they're literally most... on just on the opposite side of the wall i can guarantee you most bugs get in on the grower you know, mm-hmm. here in yeah. Canada, there the places I applied. I applied at Aurora a while back, and yeah. I know that they make you shower every day. You have to shower in, shower out, no matter. Even if you're just going for coffee, I think because I, I remember hearing a story of they hired a grower, and immediately after hiring her, they got an infestation of spider mites. Yeah, and they fired her, mm-hmm. and they had to decontaminate the entire facility. And yeah, um, it's not cool. So cleanliness you know yeah it's That's important man it's a big, important. big one next to godliness sure is i'm pretty lucky i'm pretty lucky but also prevention too like i, I noticed twisted mentioned foliar spray of compost tea in the mm. chat that's a great way to set up some like you know defenses um like in beneficial microbes and stuff Boost the autoimmune um, system with a plant yep that too so um yeah you basically have an army set up to fight off the pathogen pathogenic uh bugs mm. before they can take hold you know and they make it taste like shit probably too you know i don't know <laughs> what bugs like so yeah man so prevention is better than cure but obviously if you i mean if you come to this podcast to listen to it because you have bugs and you're trying to find a way to get them fixed then none of that really matters does it because you've already got them and you need to find ways to get rid of them and First off, if your plant's flowering, you don't want to spray anything on it. You can't use pesticides or anything like that at all. You don't want to do that to your buds. But if the plant's in veg, if you need to, then you can use pesticides. Most pesticides will work. But they can be damaging, man. They they can be damaging to the microbiome in the soil. They can be damaging to your actual plants. And some of them are very strong and can burn your plant and shit. You don't want that happening, obviously. So if you can avoid using pesticides at all, avoid it. Yeah, there's the simple ways which you can keep plants, uh, bugs off the plants. And one of them is just making sure you have a strong fan blowing, you know, you have a fan oscillating around the room. So it, it constantly blows the bugs and then they wouldn't want to settle on the plant because it's too windy, pretty much. They, you know, so aphids, for example, they're, they're big bugs. If they're constantly blown by the wind, they find it more difficult to lay eggs. Uh, they'll find it more difficult to grip onto the plant things like that so make sure your fans blow in nicely wow. it pisses fungus gnats off the fans mm-hmm. great way. Really if, you point, if you point it at the soil and shit yeah 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 that's a great way to it's a really effective way to get rid of your fungus gnats is to have a, a fan blowing on the top of your soil mm-hmm. or cocoa yeah. and just They're... to dry that very very top layer real fast the, the fungus gnat they'll lay their eggs in the in the like the top centimeter into an inch of soil on top on the top of your pots and if you're using like air pots, you know where the, the plastic ones with the spikes on the outside. And mm-hmm. If you're using them, it, fuck, I got fungus snacks in there before. And I was a pain in the ass, couldn't get rid of them because there was also coming out the side of the pots as well as the top. Because, mm-hmm. because you know, that's what they were laying oh, their eggs all over yeah. the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah man, they it, do. it was bad. It was terrible. They go oh, into the, 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 the drainage holes. I see them running in and out of there all the time. And that's why I don't like yeah. using diatomaceous earth to treat them because... You, they'll just go in the holes on the bottom you know yeah so there we go i did say earlier about i've only had three but yeah i did have fucking fungus nuts as well that came in in some uh playground thing yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but you know i didn't remember it so that means that it wasn't too much of a bad experience no no they're not that bad <laughs> you really. can't get the fuck rid of them easily you know 
they kind of remind me of like fruit flies they're like a nuisance mm -hmm. yeah basically but, you know, yeah you can get rid of them pretty easily yeah before and, they do too much damage i think you'd have to have quite a few of them for them to yeah. be really you just think, to in, I've, I've often seen one or two of them in the tent but mm -hmm. what i do is i'd, I'd open the tent i turn the light off and i leave the light on the, in the room and then you'll see them come out of the tent and then you just close the tent turn the light back on bob's your uncle get one of them electric tennis rackets <laughs> <laughs> Zap them for fuckers. Fungus net? yeah but for everything that flies much Zap them Zap oh, them geez. nice satisfying pssst. and you catch that fucker i mean black <laughs> you're dead right. now that's what you I get would it register on one of those things like those th fungus yeah man i've zapped so a fungus small. snap with one of them i'm sure I've, smacked, <laughs> uh, I've got smaller flies that yeah you just got to be looking man it's gonna make sure okay. that they hit the bar and don't fly through the gap any you know right. small things but you can still get them get a little shock out of it yeah i'll have to i'll have to get one of those because occasionally i see one with my house plants too I'll kill him. Get 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 one, Marge. You'll love it. Love it. That's right. Your husband will love it too, right? Great things, yeah, man. Oh, of course. Of course. Should, should have one of them. Just hang a few around your grove room. <laughs> They'll learn their lesson pretty fast. <laughs> Shit. But they got the uh, hanging things in your grove room as well. You know, like sticky traps. That's always an option of uh, if you got flying insects that are in the grove room, catching them in sticky traps is an easy way to get around it. And you can get yellow ones as well. And some of the bugs are much more attracted to yellow. So if you just hang them as a preventative in your grow room as well, that it's, it's a great way to get rid of them. And you can lay them at the bottom, like on, to, on top of the medium at the bottom of the plant, and that will catch it. If you've got fungus gnats, for example, they'll come out the medium and then mm -hmm. they'll fly to the yellow sticky trap and just straight away they're fucked. They're not laying eggs all over the place. And that's a great way to get rid of them. Without right. using that's what I did for fungus gnats before too. It does work. Well, well, there is it. another bug that I have in my tent almost all the time, and it's a bug that I'm not worried about. That that would be springtails. It uh, will freak yeah. you out if the first time you see them, though, because you know, these little bitty white bugs come out and, and you run off. The reason be common as well, like dust. Mm. What's that? The reason be common as well, especially in cocoa oh, yeah. grows. Seem a lot with cocoa grows. Yeah, but they're good bugs. I mean, they basically eat organic material and and they poop out fertilizer, so you're good. They're generally yeah. a sign of a healthy ecosystem, yeah. Yeah, and you can actually go and buy springtails if you go to a pet shop or something. Then they have them where you, whether you buy the reptiles and you buy crickets and all these bugs, and they'll have a little bit of springtails there. And you can buy those and put them on your pot, and they'll just go away and just breed, man. And they won't eat your roots or anything that you, they're not supposed to. They're well behaved, man. So if you want to use springtails as a beneficial, and that's a good thing because i mean tg knows more about the ship beneficial uh bacteria and um, beneficial bugs and nematodes and shit which you can use on the plant to prevent bugs too i use nematodes all the time um i just want to say too about thrips they like sticky traps too but they like blue ones it's what I call it, yeah. all right yeah, i don't know if you guys mentioned that but uh, no no okay cool it's a good way yeah. to, to keep a, an inventory in your tent though, if you got bugs or not if you put a yellow and a blue sticky trap down there and you look at them you'll know if you get thrips or, or whatever else you know monitor your trap that's right um so what we're saying about the um predator bugs yeah that's Nematode. pretty much the way i uh go about you know controlling my perpetual fungus gnats and other i have thrips actually i've had thrips for quite a while now but again they don't really get out of control because mm. i take uh, precautions using said beneficials um and yeah there's lots of different kinds the the main ones that people like to use are these you know there's beneficial mites there's beneficial nematodes there's stuff like like row beetles and like actual predatory uh, arthropods type things which look and uh they're really cool and i've seen them actually fucking hunt fungus gnats and eat them it's badass cool um but for me, um, based on the predators that I deal with, um, and which are quite common with a lot of so soil, organic soil grower type things, are the uh, nematodes. So beneficial nematodes that I use, they're called Steiner Nema Feltier is the scientific name. Um, most places that sell these will list them as such, but I think that's basically like the only one that anybody uses for that. And they eat lots of different things. They'll take, they'll uh, eat the fungus nut larvae, um, basically all of the, 
I don't know how to say it, but it's a type of fly that a fungus nut is, like cicarid or sciarid flies. They're the family of, of fungus nuts. They also control thrips, um, and they'll eat the larvae that are in the soil. So beneficial nematodes are great. Um, I also use BTI, which is monkey's favorite mosquito dunk. Absolutely. Yeah, the Bacillus uh, cur BT, Thuringiensis curistaki, right? Or Israeli. Israeli, honest. Yeah, the curistaki is BTK, and that one's for caterpillars. Right. But that one, so yeah, between those two, I use those as a soil drench. I'll apply nematodes right at the beginning of the grow and about every two to three weeks afterwards. Um, and yeah, my pests really never get out of control. Um, and I have them basically built into my soil because I use unsterilized compost from my backyard in my soil. Mm. But Look, um, you can find balance and then it doesn't get too out of control. And that's called the economic threshold. And it, that's uh, mm. when it goes over that level, then things start to go a little bit fucked up. You got yeah. some pest infestation. And that means that you're going to have to get the big guns out, man. You're going to have to go with the chemicals, get some pesticides out. Now, there's ways you can do this with homemade pesticide shit. You can just make it home by mixing some capsaicin, chilies, or maybe even onions. Does, does onion have capsaicin? I'm not sure. But, you know, uh, using chili peppers or something like that and mixing that with some water, then you can use something like that. Some bugs don't like capsaicin and they'll leave. Uh, you can do onion and garlic as well as a preventative because the bugs don't like the smell of it. So th then they'll stay away just because of these horrible smell that's on the plants. There's things that you can even just dish soap, you know, use a little bit of uh, some washing up liquid. Then that, be, that can be good as well. We say to be you? Super, super careful with dish soap. I killed a rose mm -hmm. plant one year because I didn't dilute it enough. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They do make insecticidal soaps. Um, Safer's End All is one product that I actually mm -hmm. do use mm -hmm. if I do have. And they're, fucking... they're unscented most of the time as well if you use the insecticidal yeah. soap. So that, yeah. then you don't they're, get a dodgy smile with it. They're made of, um, what is that plant? Monkey, you probably know more than that. No, uh, um, pyrethrins, I, I, right? Pyrethrum? No, pyrethrum, that's per, uh, that's completely different. Say for insecticidal soap, is ba it's not... It's got potassium It doesn't have a poison on it. it. Basically, they just dissolve the shell. They're only it, going for the shell dissolving on dries, insecticidal soaps. Yeah, it dries so it's, out no, it's, or something like that, right? You no, know, it's not... not uh, permethrin or, or uh, pyrethrum or none of that stuff. Oh. So yeah. one of those is derived from a flower or something, right? The pyrethrum. Uh, pyrethrum is yeah. derived from a daisy. Um, <clears throat> now that, that's, that's a controversial one right there. Sometimes people do use pyrethrum in cannabis, but I am very careful with pyrethrum when it comes to food. Yeah. yeah. And again, you don't want to spray this shit on your flowering plants if you can prevent it. You don't want to put anything like that there. Never yeah. flowering. I mean, using the insecticidal soap, or what's it called, a uh, Castile soap. Yeah, that's another good one. If you can, you, Castile yeah. soap, if your plants are flowering, because that's got no scent and it shouldn't leave too much residue behind. Right. So you can wash your buds afterwards and get this shit off if necessary. But like TG said, it's really easy to burn plants when you're using soap. So just use a, like a small bit, half a milliliter per liter start off there and see what happens you know and if you use a strong enough spray for bugs like aphids that are the big you know juicy green ones you can spray them off the plant take it outside into the garden spray it off like cover the whole thing in soap water and bugs will fall off because it's slippery for one some of them get trapped in bubbles so they suffocate and they'll die that's another way and then just washing them off as well it, that will obviously reduce the numbers and just by keeping the numbers down you can make sure that the infestation doesn't get too strong get too bad and then the plant doesn't get too fucked up you know yeah the mechanism that the soap kills the, the bugs is really simple it just dissolves the shell very slowly so basically there's no support you're turning a bug into yeah, a blob yeah. and it can't move anymore then after that if that measure doesn't work then you move on to the neem oil that's the that will kill pretty much most bugs on the cannabis plant there, you just mix a couple of milliliters into a liter with uh, some Castile soap as well, because that'll help emulsify the neem oil. And it, because neem oil is an oil, it will try and float to the top of the water. But if you use some soap, it'll help disperse it around the water properly. Right? That's how it works, yeah. right? Neem oil is really bitter, so you really don't want this on your cannabis. Mm -hmm. And it smells funny. Oil here. <laughs> you, well, you can't get it. 
I don't know. I seem to remember reading that it's not available in Canada, but I could be completely wrong. We're using. I think you are completely wrong. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, cold I mean, it's a natural. So, sorry, monkey. I was gonna say it's a natural insecticide, so I mean, you you can you can make it yourself. I mean, if you got a neem tree nearby, well, you get, yeah, or you can buy the neem, the actual neem on itself and, and mix it. Oh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a natural pesticide, man. It smells a little bit funky. If you can just get some neem oil, you want to go to Amazon or whichever shop you, you get your stuff from, and search for cold pressed organic neem oil, and that means that it's gonna be solid at room temperature rather than liquid. And so before you use it, you want to warm it up. Just if you get the bottle and put it in some warm water, it will melt the, melt the neem oil inside. And then you can take that and put it into some spray and spray it, or spray it around your grow tent and across the pots of the plant before you spray it onto the plants. And just the smell by itself might be enough to get rid of the bugs. The, the neem is like, it's like a nerve agent, like serine gas or something. And when the bugs go near it, it'll just fuck them up and they wouldn't be able to eat properly or they wouldn't be able to go and reproduce. And shit. it just, it kills them off within a few days if they ingest the, the neem oil. So the, the smell of it is bad for them and they might just leave once they start smelling neem oil. So using it like once a week or twice a week, just around the bottom of the tent is a good preventative as well. I used to do that, but you know, there was never any, any need really. But just again, with the neem oil pesticide, be very careful. You just use a little bit first and build up the build up the amount of neem you're using as necessary. But you don't want to be burning your plants with any of this kind of stuff. And if you've got flowering plants, don't use it at all. You don't want this shit on your flowers. You won't be able to wash it off the same way. It would just make your buds taste like shit and smell like shit. And you don't want that. So I'm extremely conservative when it comes to, to spraying. I mean, I, if I don't have a problem, or I don't see a problem. I don't spray a preventative mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, there's no need to. But you, if you have to, just be very diligent every time you open that tent up, is to look look for problems. Yeah, react. But I don't. I do not do preventative spraying. And then, I mean, if you have still got problems after that, then you're going to have to go for some chemical pesticide. But you have to go to the store and get. And that's going to be some powerful shit, man. And that can't be sprayed on your flowers either. So, but you shouldn't get there with the right treatment using some neem oil, even just the soap or, you know, blasting the soil to make sure that it's drying out properly. So eggs dry out and die off. That's an easy way to get rid of them. There's loads of ways to get rid of bugs before you get to that stage. And just like we said last week as well with the plant problems, if you have any issues like this, if you want to come over to Persis and just take a picture, we'll be able to help you out. Uh, and give you the best idea on how to get rid of them. But we all suffer bugs at some point, except for GB. GB, you've never had any bugs. Back <laughs> I've there. never had any man fucking touch wood. I'm touching every bit of wood in the room in front of me. <laughs> Scared you know, of that. I've never had a fucking single bug issue in my in my tent. Good, good. good. Ever. And oh, I don't know how because I grow outside outdoors and i am not the clean like i'm listening to teach going cleanly listening teach has seen my fucking grow room okay <laughs> it's not the cleanest in the world <laughs> in all honesty i'm surprised i don't have like fucking powdery mildew and bud rot every grow it's like i'm not the cleanest guy either but um i don't know i just chalk it up to my really robust microbiome <laughs> that <laughs> kills it all off if fire top ass there is an inch of sand on top of the soil a good thing to kill off bugs like yeah. acer yeah i mean it can be if it i don't properly. like that man yeah it just seems like i don't know sand. i don't like sand on, <laughs> yeah it's, it's so heavy and it's uh -huh. so like it might smother them out but fuck me it's hard to deal with after then you have got a bunch of sand on your soil yeah it's and you great. have to use the right sand as well and this is the thing it, you want the bugs are gonna hatch out their eggs and then climb through the sand and if the sand is sharp enough it's gonna rip up their wings and their their exoskeletons and shit before they make it to the surface and it'll kill them off yeah. or, or at least stop them from breeding you know just reducing their numbers in general but you don't want to use sand uh, because it'll affect the watering system it doesn't work the yeah, same yeah. when it's wet so if you yeah. water your plants and it, it's wet it's not going to work anyway but there's better ways of dealing with it if you just let the top two inches of the medium dry out it should kill off 
most of the eggs at the top of the medium. So it, it, you don't really need to use sand or diametaceous earth anyway. And if you do use diametaceous earth, then put a mask on before you use it because it's really fine, dusty fiber. You don't want to breathe that shit in. So be careful with that shit too. And the same with any pesticides, put some gloves on, or turn your fans off so when you're spraying things, it doesn't get blasted back and sprayed into your face. And do that before uh, you spray your plant with shit. Bugs some, plastic, man. some bugs too remember uh i don't know if you know this but thrips they lay their eggs both in soil and on the leaves or should i say in the leaves mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah yeah some soil specific uh preventative measures won't affect certain bugs like a thrip right so you're gonna have to either nail your entire well basically the whole fucking tent or do something else it's part of the watering cycle when you when you're growing in soil i mean it's not the same in in cocoa because cocoa needs that uh that constantly moist medium but when you're growing in soil it should be part of the the watering cycle don't water until the top inch of your soil is dry at least and that make sure that the eggs don't don't live in there you know so this has brought it up a couple of times in the chat too now and um uh companion plants also yeah yeah way. yeah some bugs prefer yeah, this certain is plants, it, right? Especially when you're growing outside. When you're growing outside to prevent yeah, the bugs getting on time. there, then some people would use companion plants or companion plants or cover crops, right? Yeah, for yeah, and for various reasons. Like um, sometimes the bugs like peppers. I know aphids love peppers, and might even prefer them over over cannabis. So, you know, if you have plants that attract the pests over your cannabis, that's good. But also like stuff like marigold, which can repel certain soil born bugs that uh can harm your plants some root damaging things i think is what they root, do not nematodes mm. i think is what you're talking about yes and um, by planting those around your plants you basically build a defense so it's kind of like the opposite of uh attracting them and sacrificing one so between those two applications yeah uh, if you can fine tune it depending on what kind of bug problems you're having that's a good way to to help mitigate your issues too. And Swami, then did, Swami did this with his last outdoor grow, didn't he? He planted a, what crop was it? He planted around sunflowers. his whole field. Is it sunflowers? Right. 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 Mm. And that and, yeah, reduced the, the bugs. Uh, the caterpillars yeah. went over there and ate all, all the uh, sunflowers right. and let, let his weed alone. Maybe attracted the birds too, you know, birds eat caterpillars and, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a Taoism approach, you know, sort of thing. You don't Chain need to use them. Pest shit. Pesticide should be the last resort, man. And check yeah. the, with the pesticide that you're using as well, but it doesn't affect bees because I'm sure nobody needs to be yes. told that the bees are, have been fucked and we need to yeah, try not kill anymore. You know? That's what they're called. Yeah, fuck those. But save the bees, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, um, and, but when you're outdoors, the best thing to do is plant some companion plants so the bugs are most likely to go and eat them rather than your cannabis, hopefully. Now, when the plant's flowering, obviously you don't want to spray any shit on there, but you want to get some some predatory bugs, like a praying mantis will go around and eat some of the some of the bugs off your plant. But you know they're big; they're going to need a lot of food. Oh, do remember? You know, uh, but a common one is ladybugs slash uh, ladybugs is what they're called in the USA. You know, those little red ones oh. with with the mm -hmm. dots on them. Yeah, yeah, but they are slow. You're going to need a good few of those. It, it, and, you know, ladybugs don't actually do a lot of eating. They do eat, but it's the larvae that really, they're called the aphid line, or no, the, sorry, the lacewing larvae is called aphid line, but the, the uh, uh, ladybug larvae are the ones that eat the fuck out of aphids. So that's Ooh. what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Now, who was it? We, one of the breeders we, we interviewed said he wouldn't put ladybugs in his tent for anything because they shit all over the leaves. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, good point, man. And they're slow, man. They're lazy as far as bugs go. They're better just to have in your outdoor as like a passive thing. But like if you're buying ladybugs and putting them in your tent, eh, you should probably have something else going too. What else could be mind. used? What do you think would be good? For just a generalist predator? Yeah, yeah. Um, I like mites. There's predatory mites. Um, they're called the specific ones I use are Amblyseus swirsky. Um, they're basically they're like spider mites, but they don't eat plants. They eat other mites and thrips and fucking fungus gnat larvae and all kinds of shit. So having predatory mites, um, Coppert is one big brand. I used to get little Coppert. They're those little bags that you can hang off of your plant. Mm -hmm. They'll, the com big companies use them a lot. Um, and then yeah, the mites just crawl out of those bags slowly and get all over your plants and if they find any bad mites or anything really they eat them 
And if they don't, they can survive on like pollen and, and other things in the grow. So they're kind of like there if you need them sort of thing. So Amblycia swirsky, that's the name. Great. Sweet. Oh, yeah. So you, as everybody can tell, there's plenty of ways to get rid of bugs on your plants. So if you do find some, don't fucking freak out. You can always come and ask for help over at Percy's or start off by figuring out which bug it is. And it's probably going to be one of the top four, the spider mite, the thrip, the fungus gnats, or what was the, what was the other one? Aphid. And I would say aphids, aphids. are a, a, yeah. a, a far fourth because aphids only really come around if you are outside and you're like rolling around in aphids and then you come into your grow <laughs> because they don't like, <laughs> you know, yeah. But sometimes like the last couple of years here in Saskatchewan, we've had horrible aphids. Like they fucking, you walk outside and you're like, is this dust in the air? No, it's aphids flying around. Yeah. So it's bad yeah so in years like that take extra caution for sure and there's guides like this over on percy's grow room as well and you don't need to be a member to read the posts or anything so if you have problems you just head over to percy's check on the guides and the, to kill each bug there's a different guide on Percy's. easy to read tells you how to make the different pesticides and how to kill each individual bug and shit so if you need yeah. help with that just go over to percy's and summer's coming man spring's coming so these problems will start arising again if you because being in the northern hemisphere when it's winter there's not many bugs out there like to That's bring the one, in anyway absolutely the one beautiful thing about winter here is no bugs mm -hmm. yep. just yeah yeah that's a good point just the tough ones <laughs> but, yeah well i always have bugs because they i always grow and they're always just like you know here but uh no, it's it's really handy. The just... said uh, mites go up, tights go down. He's talking about stalactites, man. Come on, what are you doing, bro? Uh, stalactites and stalactites, you know, and things in caves. Yeah, yeah. Calcium carbonate generally. Mm -hmm. Wrong mites, bro. Wrong mites. <laughs> uh, yeah, so check over at percysgrowing.com if you need some help with that shit. And if you want to ask questions, then sign up to the forum, and there'll be somebody who can help you decide what bug it is and what the best plan of action is to kill the fucker or maybe you want to just live with it yeah well, yeah don't panic man don't panic. unless it's spider mites then just like scream scream mm -hmm. run away just screaming we'll hear you <laughs> <laughs> just kidding yeah Tell spider us, mites we'll man it, just uh if you got that web on your plant then it, it might be too far at that point. <laughs> well, yeah but hopefully you would have noticed that probably, your plant's having yeah, problems yeah. before you get to that stage yeah exactly just come and ask for help if you need it. It's that's all you have to do. So we have some questions as well, which we should cover. Uh, from Gellert, Gellert is a new member. I think that's how you sell it. Maybe Gellert, G E L E R T. Sorry if I'm butchering your name, but I tried my best. Uh, <laughs> I have a question. I have a question about the podcast. Why are the first twenty-five episodes or so not in the feed anymore? I heard GB reference them as some of his favorite episodes. Apparently, he was even more foul-mouthed than today. <laughs> it's not a problem if you don't want to answer this one. Uh, what sort of? Yeah, as I sort of feel like a stalker asking for a victim's new address anyway. <laughs> yeah. So no, they they are on there. I did check when you said. I was like, what? What's that about? And we are on there. It's just maybe the podcast provider you're using doesn't have it like maybe goes to 200 episodes or something or 100 episodes and then doesn't show the rest that, that that's possible so uh just go to itunes spotify spotify will have all of the episodes as far as i know but if you go to podbean which is our, our main of podbean slash high and homegrown podbean.com slash high and homegrown that has uh, every episode i went on check there today so it has mm -hmm. from episode one onwards do you have links to all episodes on the website? Uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't done anything on the website for a while. Okay. But, but I was thinking it would be a good idea to just get a list up like that with uh, links to each one. Yeah. And the fell meltedness. Mackie asked me to rein that in. And, because... and then all, we've heard, <laughs> all, all thanks to HEPs. Fuck, 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 fuck. You're so bad. You You're so but terrible. Today I wasn't was all it... fuck, fuck. You was. No, was it that bad? It was well, that, okay. that, that Mackie had to actually ask you to rein it in. There's other shit. Like, no, <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Much. <laughs> Just some of the, co the topics. Funny. Yeah, That's the, funny. They're funny. In fairness, I, I, but I, think I, keep, I keep saying it, Marge. It is the Irish way. We course an awful lot. You, you know? do, do you? We do. We course <laughs> so much. Like, it's like, what the fuck? Even, even when I get up in the morning, it is be going. 
You just start your day with a big old F bomb in this bowl. Oh, yeah. Well, normally that's what it is. It's rock shouting down the stairs to the other fella going, Where but... the fuck is this? Where the fuck is that? Where the fuck did you put everything? <laughs> I saw a really good tweet the other day about this, but it was more just it was about white people. And when white people yawn, they're like, Ah, oh, fuck. And I was like, Yeah, <laughs> we do do that a lot. <laughs> Wait, uh, I yawned the other day and then my dog howled after me. So, <laughs> 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 what the fuck, man? Are you taking the piss out of me? That's nice. Just... He thought you were trying to talk to him, probably. You know what I, mean? yeah. I can match mm-hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> then we have another one, also from Gellert or Gellert. Mm-hmm. Uh, has anyone ever had to wait for more than a week for a seed to germinate when planting straight into the medium? I'm getting a tad concerned. Anybody had to wait for more than a week? I mean, I'm looking I'm at three not. days, around three days, I'm expecting to see it. Generally, don't. If you're saying a germinated seed, yeah, we did. You already tapped just, sit, that shit? just sitting there waiting. Yeah, I don't know. I feel I like could... I feel like maybe I've had to wait longer than I was expecting before. Sorry. More than a week. I don't know. No, the that, longest that's... I've waited was five days. <laughs> that's pushing it. Mm. Yeah. It's, not, it's not coming out by then, and your conditions are uh, mm. ideal. Then. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I might be a little concerned too. But yeah, yeah. Week, to be honest, like maybe five, up to five days, maybe you said, but <laughs> well, well, many, how many beans can take a while. He... Yeah. Sorry, TB. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, how many beans did he pop? I don't know. Not sure. But, yeah, but I have yeah. seen diaries before, though, where, you know, a girl will be well underway and, and a, a bean will just pop up. Somebody says, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one or something like no, that. He, it, just, it does happen. Um, if I'm looking at this question again, though, he says, has anyone ever had, ever had to wait for more than a week for seeds to germinate when planting straight into the medium? So did yeah. he germinate beforehand and like get that tap root or did he just stick the seed? Yeah, right in the it soil sounds like just that? straight into the soil, doesn't it? Yeah. Then, right. Which could mean it could take longer, possibly. But even at seven, even at seven days going straight, like I, I rarely soak beans or do anything. I don't do the paper towel. I put them straight into these little easy plugs. It's like going straight into a medium. And uh, I think like three, four days before I see something. That's how deep you max. plant it. You know, yeah. if, if you plant it too deep, then it's not going to make it out the, the medium at all. It'll get a certain yeah. amount and there's just not enough food for it to push the rest of the way. That's the biggest problem yeah. I've seen with us, with failed seeds is planting them too deep. They do fail I've, sometimes. I've made that mistake too. Yeah, yeah. it's easy to do, man. Sure. It's yeah. always better to plant them like half a centimeter, just a small amount. And you can always add soil to the top of the pot later on. You don't want to yeah. put, dig it too deep. Once it's out and it's grown a little bit, put some soil on top of the pot if necessary. <laughs> but otherwise, just try not to plant it too deep because that is probably what's causing the problem. Yeah, I've always learned that you should plant the seed two depths of, of the seed deep. Mm-hmm. Not you too know, much, man. Not too much. Not too much. Yeah, it doesn't take much, just a little bit. Uh, yeah. right, so we also have one from Woody. He said, can you detail watering frequency with the soil grows six inch pot from placing the seedling into the soil first day and then the next week's worth of watering? How much milliliters? How often per day? Plain old water or something sparkling? Additional cow mag for our water or rain? In soil, mate, just leave it for a while. I mean, it can be like five days. As long as there's water in the pot, it'll be fine. That's what I do. I mean, what were you saying, TG? Uh, I, yeah, I water whenever they need it. It really depends on, really depends on the size of the plant. Bigger plants transpire more and obviously need more water to drink. Um, but yeah, on average, uh, like it's hard to say on average because you don't know, guys, don't know what an average plant for me. But I don't know, an average three to four ounce plant, however the fuck big that would be, um, in a three gallon pot, I'd say I water every two to three days, mm-hmm. um, just because I don't let them go completely dry, but I like to keep them like at the driest at a at a very very semi-moist sponge but not you know just a barely damp sponge kind of thing but he's talking but, about um, a seedling here as well so you if you oh let yeah. it dry out a little then it'll be encouraged to push 
for more water yeah, yeah, or the, the roots will grow a little bit faster uh, i forgot it was a keep, seedling keep lifting up the pot <laughs> check how light it is once the pot is too light once you know it, it feel you just know it's too light this is this is a, it feels like it's got no weight to it whatsoever and then, then you add some fucking water to it then and then wait yeah. again until it does that and i reckon it's going to be three or four days in between when it's just the seedling yeah yeah right because the my transpiring comment applies here too. There's only three leaves on it. It's not going to fucking be able to breathe very much, right? So you don't need much water in that case. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Mackie's probably right. And how much milliliters as well? It's like try not to yeah. get any runoff. Just when you first add the the part, uh, this when you've done this, added the seed to the soil or you, the seedling to the soil, it's going to be fully saturated then. So just try and get an idea of how much that weighs. You know, just lift it up so you got some kind of idea of how much is is well saturated and then when you water the plant again do it slowly just a little bit little by little until it feels around the same weight you don't want to get runoff if you can help it but a little yeah. bit of runoff is also okay don't get too stressed you just don't want it pissing out the bottom so just a little bit of water at a time and just until you feel the weight come back to the pot and then, then just let it sit for a few days again be to fine. your point about um drying it out a bit to let the roots you know encourage them to grow out a bit that's that's the technique that i kind of take when i when i water a plant that small i'm not watering the whole pot usually i start right at the stem and i kind of just go in a circle in a spiral out yeah. from the stem and as the plant gets bigger you make your your circle or your spiral bigger mm -hmm. um, eventually reaching the, the the walls of the pot but yeah you don't want to saturate the thing because like you don't want the roots sitting in water all the time because it can't breathe that much that be, being such a small plant it can't handle that much water it won't suck that much water up and therefore it'll just sit there in the water so only as much as you need right but um mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. take much when they're that small so you also yeah. asked how often daily it's like twice a week probably mate you're not going to be doing it too much yeah unless you're if you're in cocoa different story you know you, but you said soil here so every few days you'd be watering it again a couple of times a week maybe plain old water or something sparkling it, just plain oh, water is fine mate do you think so <laughs> oh is that sarcasm <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> uh, if somebody wants to do like sparkling water for their plants would it hurt no, but, no, know, no, no. sparkling oh, water yeah. is good to spray on the plant for foliar feeding because it's got carbon dioxide di uh, d dissolved in it which makes it carbonated and yeah. then you spray that on your plant and then the stomata on the leaves can absorb the co2 straight from the water and that can be good for the plant because it's nice boost in co2 but that's about that it don't put like that shit stretch, in the media probably that not good for like, roots, that seems no. pretty bougie to I don't know. I've read that right. a long time ago. Maybe it'll work, man. Maybe it'll work. Like anything, okay. I haven't done scientific Perrier. studies. Perrier. <laughs> You're going to Perrier <laughs> for your plants. Oh, oh no. Holy. Only San Pellegrino. Sorry. Oh, right. oh, yeah. San Pellegrino oh, or nothing. Definitely right. That shit's pretty good. That's <laughs> Nestle, though. And fuck Nestle. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah you're right. Fuck said, them. Uh, I recant my previous statement. <laughs> he also said uh, additional cow mag for our row or rainwater. So again, in soil, mate, then you don't necessarily need to add calcium unless the plant needs it. And if the if the soil is good enough, then it probably won't be needed. Just eat lots of eggs and make lots of compost out of your eggshells. There you go. That's what I was saying. I said to the wife the other day, I made some six eggs and made some scrambled eggs and shit. And she's complaining because I put the eggs back in the box. So we put the eggs back in the box. Let's put the eggs back in the box. And I'm like, but you want them for the worms, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I eat a fuckload of eggs, man. So she's trying to tell me about the plants. The, the, the worms don't need any more eggs now. They've had plenty. <laughs> Surely not. Surely they can do with some more. Plant loves cow mac, right? <laughs> that is my logic, though, or at least with my soil, because I eat three eggs every day. Basically, basically every day I eat three eggs, at least, in the morning for breakfast. I have a fuckload of eggshells in my compost, and it's probably just, like, loaded with calcium. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So... Oh, well, I'm going to assume that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the soil should be good, man. So you shouldn't need to add anything to the rainwater. Yeah, rainwater uh, is the best. And also one more from Woody is that where do baby snakes come from? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Mommy snakes. Yeah, mommy snakes, I would assume. You should go to Manitoba eggs, and right? check out the snakes, snakes are born from eggs, aren't they? Yeah, the reptiles. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's some, are some snakes not born from the mouth, no? 
Maybe there are some not, live mate, birds. Mate, you're from Ireland, man. St. Patrick got rid of all the snakes. What are you supposed to yeah, know about snakes? Yeah, I don't snakes? know about it. I, 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 just, I, I have a feeling i seen a documentary where, like, snake was, oh, it was like it was no, getting sick. No, 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 that's no. savage. That's savage. Maybe right? it was that fucking something like game. I think that's or an Ouroboros, I think, that you're thinking of. Mate, I've seen a mean video the other day where a frog got caught by a snake and was slowly fucking eaten alive by this snake, man. It was tragic. It was tragic. It was so bad. It's like, first off, you're going by one leg and he's sort of just like breathing in the fucking leg. Oh, man. And then he gets to the second leg and, and then his body's in. And the, the, you can see the thing struggling all the time, trying to climb back out of its mouth and shit. It's like, oh, God. It's got, the poor frog, man. But, you know, snake's got to eat. <laughs> yeah, apparently, <laughs> a viviparous snake gives birth. Yeah, well, live yeah. snakes. Yeah, live snakes. Snakes. Bowls, yeah, I knew they did. Garter I think snakes. Garter Those snakes. We have garter snake. Uh, four twenty. So easy garter snake. Oh, it's my 420. Yeah. four twenty. Manitoba right now is overrun with garter snakes, though. They're yeah. in big orgies. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, they? Don't have them. yeah, they are. They come out of really? hibernation and then just go crazy. Oh. There's pictures on Twitter. Bubble Hawk said, look up snake eats kangaroo. That's real nightmare fuel. <laughs> oh my fuck. <laughs> Only in Australia. Only in Australia. You know, yes. <laughs> yeah. She's those anacondas, man. There. I'm Eat surprised those. they're in a species of snake that just eats kangaroos in Australia. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. No, and the I kangaroo mean, is also venomous. We're really lucky in Ireland. The worst fucking thing we have is a fucking wasp. Yeah, that same, same here in the UK, really. Yeah. Wasps and then the worst. Too. Yeah, the worst fucking thing that could eat you is is a badger. You know, <laughs> and that's not gonna even eat you. That's just gonna bite your legs yeah. till it breaks, and then run away and go, ha ha, chase me now, fucker. Yeah, you know, so there you go, Woody. <laughs> where do baby snakes come from? From the pits of hell. Wait, that's where. That's, <laughs> yes. Yeah. From your worst nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. all accurate. Very accurate. So I think that's about. It. That's all the questions which we had. That's uh. That's about bugs. You know, if you need any help, then you know where to go. Head over to percysgrowroom.com and look for the bugs guides. They're up in the in the top banner in, in guides if you need help. And sign up to the forum if you, if you need any help there. You can take a picture of your plant, upload it so we can see the effects on the leaf and try and figure out what bug it is and then try and figure out the best way to get rid of it. So head over to Percy, sign up. But that's about it, I think. Are we all done? Are we all done? You, you yep. chill for five minutes and yeah. enjoy this 420. Done here. Let's go back to the uh, to the outro. Let's go here. I'm still trimming. You're gonna be trimming so, for a while, aren't you? Outro tune. There you go. So there we go, everybody. That was the episode all about bugs on cannabis plants. If you need any help at all, as usual, just head up to percyscrowroom.com slash forum. And there's loads of growers there, all experienced growers that are more than happy to help you out with any questions that you have. Just take a picture of your plant, tell us what you think the problem is, and open a thread. And there'll be lots of people just commenting on there, helping you out, making sure that you got the right answer and the right treatment to get rid of the bugs that are on your plant. But for now, that's it. That's the episode for this week. The next episode is on Sunday, which will be the live stream over our YouTube channel, which you should already be a subscriber of. If not, head over to youtube.com slash homegrown and click on that subscribe button because your support means a lot to us. And that is a real good way to support the site and the show is just by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's a great way you can help us out. So thank you. We'll catch you on Sunday for the live show. And if you're not around for that, then we'll catch you on Monday for the cannabis news as usual. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay high, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>